Lord, how long are you going to take? This man is getting on my nerves. I'm coming. Wait a minute. Oh, Lord, Simon, I'm coming. What is it that I can do for you? What's wrong? Can you give me a glass of water, please? Yes, I can get you something to drink. You need a body. Stay here and talk to me. Uh huh. I got something. Upstairs, if you want to go up there, ask him how you doing, how he's feeling today. Saw Uncle Bradley last week. Mm. He's doing good. Matter of fact, he told me to tell you hello. Yeah. And what lies he telling now? Listen, he said JT's going to graduate from college next month, Mama. He's really doing good. You had to go. Mm. You know what, Precious? What I tell you about calling that boy my nephew? And the thing is, he ain't get no help from his cyber daddy. I'm just glad he didn't turn out like him. Mom, I don't understand that. I mean, you called the boy your nephew from the time he was born up until Aunt Zola died. Your best friend Zola. I just don't get it. Why you wait till she died to disown him? Let me tell you something. You don't have to understand what I say or why I say it. What you have to do is respect what I say. You understand me? Girl, change surgery. <laughs> Aunt Whisper said Mr. Morgan died from AIDS last month, Mama. She ran into his ex-wife at Walmart and she told him. She said he died alone in the nursing home, Mama. Hmm. She has finally caught up with him, huh? You know, it's not necessary to be so demeaning, Mom. You know, Mr. Morgan was a nice man, and he didn't hurt anybody while he's alive. Mm. In fact, he was more giving and caring than most so-called Christians, and you know it too. Yeah, right. Mama, and I keep telling you that you need to stop assuming that everyone who dies of AIDS is gay or bisexual. You know, you're always talking that mess. I don't understand it. You know what? I don't need you coming in here preaching to me today. I just don't. I'm not in the mood for it. Listen, Mama, I just, you know what? People, when, when they have AIDS, there's other people out there who get AIDS. Besides, there's people like Arthur, Arthur Ashe, the, African, the American tennis player who died of AIDS from a blood transfusion. Wait a I minute, mean, wait, 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 wait. Blood transfusion. Now see, that's exactly why I don't give blood at those blood drives, Precious. I mean, get some old disease from old sinful person. You don't know where them needles come from. Probably get some dope thing or something. And then too, I ain't no orange or no, you know what I'm saying, needle pad. They could just be sticking all in my I'm not doing that. Mama, listen, I'm, I'm talking about the people that are getting AIDS at increasingly high rates since the 90s. Those women, you know, you don't hear about people dying from that, dying like that anymore. I'm talking about people who are getting it at increasingly high rates. Hmm. <coughs> you know what, Mama? Why don't you get some help for Daddy? You can have somebody come in here maybe once, twice a day just to help you out with him. You look tired. Look at your precious. Mama, you need to get some rest. Let me tell you something. Now, you know as well as I know that your daddy is not getting help. Anybody up in here helping him but me. The only other person that he would allow to help him is Bradley. And it ain't no good so-and-so ain't been out here since your daddy become bedridden. 
But I do have an idea, though, Precious. 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 Yes, Mama? <laughs> Won't you help me? Because after all, that is your daddy. Not Bradley done some caregivers. Look, Mama, I was just saying. You know what? And that's your problem. You're always just saying. Girl, roll your eyes at me again, Lord Jesus. I'm gonna knock you clean on the floor. <laughs> listen, Mama, I can see where this is going. Uh -huh. So I'm gonna be going now. Mm. But listen, you never did say if you were gonna go to JT's graduation or not. You know, Mama, he never understand why you stopped loving him. But he still loves you. <laughs> I'll tell you what you do. You go on and lock the door on your way out, okay? All right, have a All good right. day. Ma Mom, have a good day. Mom, listen, can you, would you please tell my daddy I said hi? Mm -hmm. yeah. so, Mom, I don't have time to go upstairs right now. Just tell him I said mm -hmm. hi. Right. I love you, Mama. Mm -hmm. Keep, Mom, put that bottle down. Uh -huh. I am coming, Simon. Please, wait a minute. Goodness. What is it now, Simon? What is it now? Your stomach hurt. Yeah. Well, what am I supposed to do? Give me, give me some more water. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. Oh, oh I love this show. Oh, man. Every time, every time. It's fine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Whisper, listen, I hope you're not expecting Mama to come to JT's graduation. Now, what do you mean, Precious? Didn't you tell her JT wanted her to be there? It's important to him, and he wants her to come. I told her, Whisper, but for some reason, she doesn't want to come. You know, she's been acting funny about JT ever since Aunt Zola died. She won't tell me what's going on, either. Mm. Ooh, girl, do you think it's because he's gay? No. It's not that. She knew he was gay before Auntie died. It's something else. You know, she hasn't been right since that day she spent up there with Auntie right before the end. Remember when she spent the whole day and night up in her room right before she died? You remember, don't you? No, I don't. I don't remember a lot at that time. I was just trying to get through it, you know. Me and Zola, we just started becoming good friends, and it was so hard for me to know I was going to lose my friends so soon. I didn't, I just didn't pay attention. You know, Whisper, we were all going through it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just so tough losing Auntie like that. She seemed to suffer so much. Yes. I'm just glad she knew the Lord and was saved. We'll see her again, you know. Now you might, but do you know JT? He thinks he's going straight to hell in a handbasket, as my mother would say. Yes, he does. Listen, John 3.18 says that whosoever believes is not condemned. I don't believe in a God that would send you to hell just because you don't like the same gender you are. Precious girl, what Bible are you reading that doesn't have the story of Sodom and Gomorrah in it? It's not about who you like, girl. It's about who you making love to. That's what it's about, girl. Not who you making love to. Come make on love. now. Whisper, get serious and stop playing. You believe in the Lord and love Jesus, don't you? I believe in Jesus, but does he believe in people who are gay? Jesus said he came so that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Now, if they believe and repent, They'll be saved. JT believes so. He's going to see Aunt Zola again. Yeah. Yeah, that's precious. JT, he's like a son to me, you know? And your mother? Well, used to be like his second mother. Now she's just like that whirlpool of snow we had last winter, so cold towards him. She act like that. You know, my mom's always been judgmental, but ever since Aunt Zola died, she seemed to have gotten worse. You know, I just don't know what's gotten into her. You know, listen, Whisper. It's getting late and I gotta get going, but I wanna keep talking to Mama and I'm gonna try to get her to change her mind. You know, I want her to come to JT's graduation because graduating from college is a big deal for a black man. Yeah. And he's family too. And mm -hmm. proud of my brother, man. I appreciate that, Precious. I do appreciate that. I just hope that your mother would treat him like a son like she used to. Oh, man. I know it's tough for your family. I know it's tough for you. And I just hope that you handle it just as well as some other people do. How are you holding up with it, Precious? With your father being sick and all. 
It's tough. It's you know, you've been there before. Yeah. I'm just I'm just taking one day at a time, you know? I know it's gotta be hard on mama after losing auntie. They were friends for so long, and then on top of that, now my daddy's dying too. It's gotta be hard on her. Oh, precious, I totally understand it. Just make sure you see your father as much as you can, or you'll regret it. But don't worry about it too much. He's probably so high on that morphine, he doesn't know if he came or if he left. That's how Zola was towards the end. Oh, it was so sad. Sometimes she was so high on that morphine, she just slept most of the day. I was glad too. So hard to see my good friend suffer like that. It was just so hard. Cancer? Cancer is an evil and caring disease. It just leaps in your body like an untamed forest virus. Out of control. Oh, when you see that fires out, you find out it's been smothered. It even even surface all alone, just waiting for its chance to start its rage of destruction again and just tear you down. It's just, oh my soul. Precious, I'm sorry. Oh, baby. wait, wait, don't wait, 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 don't, you know what, don't. Just make sure you see your father as much as you can, Precious. I will, Miss Bird. Thank you. You're welcome. Take care. Mm -hmm. Love you. I am so happy to see you, baby girl. How's my Precious Jill been doing? Daddy, I'm doing fine. You know what, don't you worry about me. The bigger question is, how are you doing? Can I get you anything? Something to eat, something to drink. How's my daddy going today? Nope, nope, nope. I got just what I need as soon as you walk through the door. A piece of sunshine to brighten up this gloomy old room. Come on over here and give your daddy a hug. You ain't gonna hurt me, girl. Ow. <laughs> I love you, precious. I love you too, daddy. Uh, so tell me something good. What's been going on good in your life? You know, just same old thing, going to work. Going to church, you know, spending time with friends and family, the usual. Uh-huh. You've been spending time with your mama precious. Yeah. Precious. <coughs> you know your mama gonna need you now more than ever. With your aunt Zola gone and me on the way, that's only gonna leave you here to take care of your mama. You know, it's strange. She never made any other friends outside of Zola. You know, it seemed like that's all the two of them ever needed was each other. When I was old, was old as known, said Jean just seemed so lost without it. You know, I, I, I'm trying to be there for her, Daddy, but she's just so closed off from everyone now. Anytime I try to talk to her about anything, she finds something negative to say about yeah. it. She won't even commit to going to JT's graduation from college either. Yeah. You know, why is she so angry towards him? I, I don't have the slightest idea. I'm just as confused about that as she is. I mean, I don't know. Uh, Maybe she's just having a hard time because he looks so much like Zola. I mean, I don't know what it is. You know, she used to love JT. Call him her son and everything. Yeah, I know, I know. We both did. I mean, he was the son we never had. I mean, your mama, she made, she, she, she made a decision that she only wanted one child. Mm -hmm. And we were blessed with you. And don't get me wrong, now, I would have traded you for the cutest Captain Pat You know the Captain Pat used to make his models? <laughs> Daddy, how could I forget? You know, I still have that cabbage patch doll sitting in my room waiting for the little girl. I'm gonna have some there. Ah, uh, yeah. Man, I sure do wish I'd be here to spoil my grandchildren right. Daddy, don't you go talking like that. Man, I know they're gonna be so beautiful, just like they mama. You know, I, I, I think their grandchildren the kids said, gee, something. Joyful to live for again, you know? Bring some spark back into it. Oh. Anyway, anyway. When the last time you seen old JT Daddy Brad? No, he ain't been up here in weeks to see me. Mm. I think old Bradley having a hard time seeing me like this. <laughs> Uh, my lungs don't like it when I talk too much. Uh, 
You know, I don't really get to talk that often unless you come by and see me. Your mama don't talk to me at all no more. I remember when I couldn't get that woman to shut up. <laughs> now I wish she'd just come talk to me about anything. If I don't want to, I wouldn't care. Oh, I know. Yeah. Well, I'm going to be going back. You need to get some rest. Yeah, I'm going to I'm about to. I'm about to. Can we get that? You get some cheap now. Oh, I love you. Thank you so much, Daddy. Can I get you some more help? No, no, I'm all right. Want me to put these covers up, buddy? Yeah, if you're going to tell your mama to turn the heat down for me. I don't want to be Okay. You take care, Daddy. I sure will. I sure will, man. You come on back to see me now. I will. I love okay. you. Okay, I love you too, baby. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. in my mouth, sit up. You okay? Oh, uh, you all right, girl? Mm. Girl, we've been friends for over 30 some years. You know that. But we always been there for each other. One second. Always, and we gonna always be there for each other. For what, girl? I just need you to promise that you're still gonna love me. No matter what I ask of you today. Look, Zola. <coughs> you alright? Girl, look. Now you know I've been loving you for 30 some years. And like I said, I'm always gonna love you. There's nothing that you can say to me that's gonna cause me to stop loving you. Why are you acting so melodramatic, girl? What is wrong? Sarah, hmm? I, just, I just know I don't have much time left, baby. Oh. Girl, don't talk like that. The doctors are saying the medication isn't helping me much anymore. And this pain is uh, it's so much. It's too much to bear. Girl. I'm so tired of seeing my husband and my son suffering. You know, they suffer more than I do. Oh, 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 oh. JT, he keeps crying every time he comes to see me. I mean, he thinks it's his fault. No. Because he's gay. That no, I'm, no, no, no. He's sick. He thinks God is punishing me. No, this. no, girl. I don't care about that. He's my baby, and I love him. That's right. I know you do. And every time I pray, I ask God, just, just save him. Give him some peace within himself. Mm -hmm. And then he don't brag. He don't know what to do with himself. He's running to and fro, not accomplishing anything. He can't concentrate at work. His Bible studies affecting and he's driving the nerves wow. crazy. Well, Zola, I mean, <coughs> what do you expect of him and JT? They love you, and this is really taking a toll on them. I know, I know, but I just, I guess I just want everyone to be okay when I leave, you know? I just, I want them to be okay, but. That's why I need to ask you to do something for me. Okay, anything. What? I gotta tell you a secret first, and this is a part where you may start to hate me. A secret? What kind of secret, girl? So I just, I gotta get this out. I just gotta get this out before. Okay, I I'm listening. Where do I start? Um, you remember when um, Bradley was studying to become a deacon in his church? You know, right. Back in the day? He didn't spend much time with me, man. He was always at church, always there, just studying. And he wouldn't tell me much about anything but doing God's work, baby. And when I'd ask him why, and he just, he just said he had to help his people. Do you, you remember those times? Yeah, I remember that. We talked many nights on the phone about it when you was going through that. I mean, why are you bringing this up now, girl? I thought you got over all that. I did. I needed help to do this. Uh, now. hello? No, you my girl. You were such a help to me. But oh, okay. I was about to say. Sarah, sometimes when, <coughs> when a woman's feeling lonely and left out, she needs the help of a man. The help of a what? Girl, please. Now, you know you ain't had no other man outside of Bradley. 
And besides, there's no way you had a man that didn't tell me about it. You didn't tell me? Hold on, wait a minute. See, child, you know back in high school, back in high school, I could get some numbers. Mm. I had the boys in that line. Don't you let this fool you. You know. Girl. You know. <laughs> <laughs> See, back in the day. I would. <laughs> yeah, you did. Yeah. You did pull them back in the day. I give you that. I give you that. Did y'all say I'm now? Girl, look where you at. Straight up. He ain't pulling nothing. The only thing being pulled around here is okay. you from room to room to room. <laughs> okay. Anyway, stay focused. Okay, girl. Go ahead. Go ahead. Sarah, it started out. Sarah, it started out. I didn't know what it was. What just happened, girl? You talking in circles? You remember when you and I first met Bradley and Simon? When we were young and fine. Uh oh. You remember that? Mm hmm. Yeah. But I'm still fine. I don't know about you. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. You remember uh, when Simon came over to my house at one time on his bike? Yeah, but see, he had came over to my house first, right. and he uh, was over there talking, and then he left to come over to your house. He didn't know he was the best friend. Right. Trying to play. So I don't know. Try to but play. But I saw that double turn so red. So <laughs> he fast. did. I didn't know he could turn red. I didn't know black people could turn red. I didn't know. But we learned. <laughs> <laughs> you did. You learned something. Yeah, we learned that day. You know, I told that boy I like rapping better than anybody. Anyway. Mm -hmm. Especially when he was talking about how he was going to get married to white. Yeah, I, I remember. I remember, girl. We did. Uh, so, all right, let me go back. Let me go back. Okay. You got me off track. So Bradley was sitting there coming out and in his church and um, wasn't around. And I don't know what happened, but right before a double wedding, I just felt so down. Mm -hmm. And then Simon came over to visit with Bradley one night, but of course he wasn't there because he was helping his people. Right. Whatever. So we stayed and we just talked while we waited for him. And we had a little bit of wine, too. Wait a minute. Mm -hmm. Now, I remember yeah. Simon saying something to me about, you know, he went over to see Bradley. Bradley went home. You was all upset and all that. And he stayed over there to comfort you because you was crying. Yeah, I was. <clears throat> but uh, I ain't know nothing about no wine part, though. No, no, no. Well, um, you must sit down. I feel like this will go a lot to me. Oh, well, um, you know. Okay. So, yes. <clears throat> What happened was, mm -hmm. I think, um, so we was talking and then we had the wine. Mm -hmm. I, I think we had a little bit too much wine and then we was listening to Kirk Bishop. You remember Kirk Bishop? Yeah, I remember, remember Kirk Bishop. Bishop. Mm -hmm. You know that man played two many love songs. Right. And then it probably didn't come home and I just was so, I got to crying and, and just Simon just tried to give me comfort. And Whoa, just, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Simon tried to give you comfort. You know what, Zola, I don't think I like where this conversation is going. I mean, I don't know what you're trying to do or what you're trying to prove. Why are you trying to tell me some crazy stuff on your deathbed, girl? I mean, what is this all about? What, what's it about? Okay. Um, you remember when we said that our babies, JT and Precious, look so much alike, mm -hmm. like brother and sister. And then we had said it was because we loved each other, this Sarah. We, we loved each other, Sarah. Sarah, if you come sit down. Girl, I'm not getting ready to sit down. Go ahead and talk. We loved each other so much that our babies, I mean, they inherited our friendship. And that's the reason they look so much alike. Mm -hmm. That was not the reason, Sarah, they look so much alike. Well, well, what was the reason? See, this is the part where I'm going to end up having to jump right, on a woman yeah. in her deathbed. Yeah, <laughs> this is the, she is dead serious. I can feel it in my bones. I know her well enough she can tell me something crazy. I mean, I'm listening, so I don't hear nothing. I'm listening. Sarah, okay. This is something that I plan on taking to my grave. I thought that was a long way off, but now it's here, and I need to get this taken care of, Sarah. Get what taken care of, Zola? I mean, you just spinning your wheels. You ain't telling me that you're beating around the bush. Come on with it. When I got pregnant, mm -hmm. and I found out that you were two at the same time, mm -hmm. I, was like, I was so happy. I mean, what are the odds we were going to be able to share in that experience like we did so many other things? 
Right, right. High school graduation. Got my blood pressure up a little bit. The loss of our parents. Uh huh. But when JT was born, here we go. When I saw my baby, I knew he wasn't Bradley's. JT has his birthmark just like Simon. Whoa! Hey, wait a minute. Huh? Wait, wait a minute. Wait, wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. wait. He had a what? He had a what? He had a what? A birthmark. Simon's Girl, you playing? Cheap. Listen, but Bradley was so proud of JT. Uh huh. I couldn't take. I couldn't take his own son mm -hmm. And then when we found out that I couldn't have any more kids, I mean, I just decided to let him keep his son. Mm -hmm. I couldn't break his heart, Sarah. You have to understand. Mm -hmm. I, it was my husband. I didn't know what to do, Sarah. Wait, Sarah, please just sit down and talk with me. Girl. Ain't gonna be no sitting down. Whoa! Wait a minute. What you mean couldn't break his heart? What about my heart, Zola? What about my heart? I mean, you and Simon been running around here for over 30 years keeping this from me. No, 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 Sarah. Simon doesn't even know. I've been deceiving. He don't know. He doesn't know, Sarah. I've been deceiving everyone. No one even knows about this except me. I've been carrying this by myself. And now I'm Lord, telling you, Sarah. I don't want to do what I'm thinking Sarah. about doing. Because I'm going to catch a case. <laughs> Lord, you need to catch a case. Lord, you need to hit a beam right now. You need to hit a beam right now. You know what? You know what, girl? <clears throat> I know what this is. It's the morphine, the medication. That's what it is. You're just playing with me. Medication is all over you. You're talking all crazy out your head and stuff. And it's the medicine. Stop. I know that that's what it is, girl. You cold? You all right? Just think Sarah. Stop. Sit down. Listen to me. Go on, Zola. I'm listening. I'm not believing what I'm hearing. Like but I'm Sarah, listening. Sarah, I plan on taking this to my friend. And you should have, girl, after all these years. But I thought that was a long way off, Sarah, but now it's here. But you're not. I don't want to get this taken care of, Sarah. What if something happens to JT? Mm -mm. You know your nephew, JT? What if something happens and he needs his real father? No, you mean my stepson, JT. Sarah, look, I know what I'm going to ask. What you gonna ask me? Wait a minute, girl. It's just telling me you got a baby you you with my husband. What is, it was an accident. I'm sorry, Sarah. Look, I need you to promise me that you'll make the decision. Who to tell and when to tell. Sarah, look, I need you to promise me that you'll make the decision. Who to tell and when to tell the secret. You want me to decide when to tell your secret. Really? Are, are you crazy? You know what? Better yet, why would I want to tell anybody, girl? How is me telling your secret going to benefit me? There's going to be no sit down talking about it. Girl, I can't, I can't do this. I can't do this. I can't believe you and my husband. I got to get out of here before I do something to you. Because, see, if you was not on your bed, you have to forgive me, Sarah. I'll beat you down, girl. I will beat you down. I got to go. I can't do this. Lord, have mercy. Oh, best friend. Oh, It's 
Sometimes the pain is just too much to bear, and I just want it all to be over with, man. But, oh, man, the truth of the matter is, man, I, I can't go nowhere until I know Sarah Jean is okay. You know, that's what Zola used to say. But the truth is, you can't base what you do on how others will react or feel. Right, right. I can believe nothing could have prepared me for the loss of Zola. Nothing. Whisper came along, helped me get through it enough to keep living in love. But Zola's in my heart daily. Zola was my heart. I know, man. Part of that puzzle, it's been broken off. Can't be replaced by anybody. But you know, Whisper's she's doing a good job. Yeah. You know, keeping that heart together. Ain't no cracks in that foundation. <laughs> you know, she gets along with JT real well. And she's helping me deal with his sexuality. Uh, or at least tolerate it, you know? Uh, well, yeah, that's good, man. He was blessed to meet old Whisper, yeah. man. Matter of fact, you met with me before Zola died, didn't you? Hmm. She was one of the nurses that gave her chemotherapy treatments. What? She was nice. You know, Zola liked her. You know, I didn't have nothing but Zola on my mind, man. She was the one that told me about Whisper. Get out of here, man. <laughs> yeah. She kept saying how nice she was, how pretty she was, and how she was a Christian woman. <laughs> hey, listen to this. She even invited out to church with us one Sunday, man. Uh-oh. Woo! I sure am glad she didn't accept that invitation. Yeah. You know those busybody women over at his holy temple? They would labor her in adulterers and swear I was having an affair before she Yeah, they sure would have. But the women, they accept her as my wife, you know, since we didn't marry for about a year after the death. Oh, well, that's good, man. That's good, man. I like old Whisper, man. Oh, yeah. I like Whisper. I really do, man. I like Whisper. Now, said Jean, she ain't oh. said much about Whisper. Or your marriage. Well, truth be speaking, said Jean ain't said much about nothing lately. But anyway, anyway, man, never mind all that, man. Check this out, bro. I got a gift for old JT. What you got? Graduation man? present, man. It's a $5,000 savings bond. $5,000? <laughs> you're going to make my gift look bad. I'm his dad, man. I'm his dad. I'm his dad. I'm his dad. I'm his dad. Yeah, you know, I, I don't need the money while I'm going, man. And JT, he always been like a son to me, man. He's a good boy, man. He's a real good boy, man. I, I, think he'll make, I, I think he'll make good with the money. Man. No, even if you don't, man, so what? Life is short, man. Right. Give your weight up, man. I ain't got that much weight up. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Don't be out of the face. <laughs> <laughs> Look, that's a good pound cake. <laughs> yes, it was. Ooh. Would you like another piece? We still have plenty left. Oh, no, no, no. I've had plenty. Besides, Church every first Sunday. I mean, just because I don't hang around after service and 
fellowship and talk to people, be all in their face and everything. I mean, I got to get back home to uh, Simon, Pastor. Sarah, if you get some help with Simon, you can have a chance to stay longer like you used to and enjoy yourself. You haven't even had time to grieve for Zola yet, have you? <laughs> Don't lie to me, Sarah Jean. I know you have it. You can't grieve for someone unless you allow yourself to feel the pain of losing him or her. You need to do this before Simon goes home to be with our, to be with our father. <laughs> Yet again, Pastor, I don't mean any disrespect. But I'm not trying to grieve for Zola. I mean, you don't know what she did to me. I mean, I'm not going to go into any details. The only thing I'm going to say is, you know, I just need you to keep praying for me and my family. That's, that's about all. Tell me about it, Sarah. Okay, okay. You don't have to tell me. I'll pray for you because it's automatic. Thank you. We need to pray together. But before we do, I want to remind you that whatever Zola did to you is something that you'll have to forget and forget. Just like God forgave your sins when you asked him to. And I know Zola. <laughs> she asked you for forgiveness for whatever she did, didn't she? Yes, she did. But Pastor, she betrayed me. And she told me about it when she was on a dying bed. And there wasn't anything I can do about it. So I'm not trying to grieve or mourn or anything for her. I'm not trying to do anything at this point in time that's going to cause me to break down while my husband is dying. Now, God has decided that this is a burden I must carry, and <clears throat> I'm going to carry And you still don't want to tell me? I want to discuss it, Pastor. Some things are better left unsaid. You have to forgive her, or your sins, your sins won't be forgiven. I hear you, Pastor. I really do hear you. Now come on, Sarah Jean, let's kneel and pray together. Sarah Jean? All right, Pastor. Our Father and our God. Thanks for letting me come by on such short notice, Sarah Jean. Well, there's no problem, Rooster. But I hope you didn't come by here because Pastor Barnes sent you. Nope, that's not at all. Oh, Actually, okay. I'm here because your good friend sent me. Good friend. Who? Simon? Not Simon. You know who your good friend is. Zola. You know, Whisper, <clears throat> I know I don't know you that well. But I think you ought to know I don't think this is funny at all. Okay, well, I'm sorry. <laughs> Let me start it from the beginning. Yeah. When Zola was in chemotherapy treatments, we became good friends. She talked about you all the time, mm -hmm. how she loved you like a sister, and how she hated to have to leave you after being friends for so long. She told me about how you two used to party together, spend time with your families together. And she even said that she was worried that when she died, you were going to cut yourself off from life, from God, turn into someone that just didn't love life anymore. You know, I always did tell Zola she talked too much. Don't get mad at her, Sarah. She had nobody else to talk to about this because she respected your privacy, of course. Now, she felt safe talking to me. She knows I had no interest in the relationship you two had. None. Zola could have talked to me. I think she tried to do that, Sarah. You told her you didn't want to hear it. Mm. Oh, she said that you just said that you could wait and that you didn't want to hear anything she had to say about the situation. That's why Zola felt the only way she'd be able to tell you about what was on her heart was to write it out and have me give it to you. I already know what's in that letter, so uh, I don't need to read it. Oh, okay. So Zola did get to tell you about what was bothering her. Hmm. Whew, man, it's a weight off my heart. Zola talked about whatever she had done to you, every time, all the time. Oh, man. So you know so what that. she did? No, I don't know what she did. She didn't talk to it about me. Oh. She said whatever she did do was going to cause you to disown your family and to hate everyone. 
Sir, will you read her letter? Nope. Well, may I read it to you? Well, since I don't believe that you don't know what's in it, sure, you can read it. Okay. Listen. All right. Sarah, my wonderful, beautiful, spirited best friend and sister. If you are reading this, then I've gone on to be with my father in heaven. Sarah, I love you. At this time in your life, you've probably forgotten the sisterly love we have for one another. You probably try to block me out of your memory in order to not think about me and what I've done. I'm going to tell you what I did in person, but I wanted to write this letter because I know you. And you probably didn't stay to talk with me about your feelings when I told you my secret. It is my secret only, Sarah. No one knows but me, God, and you. I didn't betray you by telling this to anyone else. Whisper is only the messenger. She has no idea what my secret is. Do you want me to go on, Sarah? Yeah, you can keep reading. I'm fine. <coughs> okay, where, where was I? <coughs> oh, yeah. Sarah Jean, you know how quickly you can judge people inside and cast them out of your life. I've watched you do this so many times over the past years, so many times. But this time, Sarah, you need to face up to the fact that we are not all perfect. Not even you. That's right, I said it. You can't do anything about it now, can you? <laughs> Sarah, I just want you to know that I love you and whatever you decide, do the secret I told you. I know it will be for the best. Just do it in love, Sarah. Don't make a decision based off of your hurt and anger toward me. And Sarah, you better not be taking this out on JT. Because if you do, when you get to heaven, I'll probably lose my wing because I'll have to hurt you, girl. And you know I can beat you, too. <laughs> Sarah, don't lose important relationships and loved ones. Simon worships the ground you walk on, Sarah. He was so distraught when he had that one slip, and that's why he stopped drinking, Sarah. He never took another drop of liquor after that day. He said he was so drunk he didn't remember what happened, and that that was a blessing from the Lord, as it would have been impossible for him to look me or you in the face if he remembered anything about that day. Sarah, do you want me to keep reading this? I mean, it's not my business, and I can I don't have to continue reading it, Sarah. You know what, Whisper? I don't mean any harm, but you have to be stupid to not know what's going on by now. <laughs> and if Zola trusted you enough to give you the letter, then I could trust you enough not to tell anyone. Just let me know. I promise I won't tell anyone about the letter. Just love your family. Precious and Simon, they both need you. And if you need anything from me, just let me know, Sarah. Thank you so much, Whisper. Thank you for coming by and bringing the letter to me. I really appreciate that. Just call me if you need anything, Sarah, okay? I will. I will. Oh, so. Go on. Stop. How's my sweet thing doing today? Stop talking like that. You see the nurse still in here. Uh, don't pay me no mind. Shoot, I wish I had me a man to call me sweet thing. <laughs> Shoot, just get the man to be all right with me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Oh, girl, girl, I'm a little pretty young thing like you got all the men trying to get next to you. Mm -hmm. Mr. Simon, if you see him, please tell them you let him know. Because the only man that can get next to me is my six-year-old son. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, Mr. Simon, I'm all done. Is there anything else that I can do for you today? Mm, no, no, no. You did a wonderful job as usual. Uh, mm -hmm. You be careful going home. There's a lot of snow out there. I looked out the window earlier. Make sure you be careful going home, and I'm going to see you tomorrow. All right, all right. Like that in front of the nurse. You need to be ashamed of yourself. Girl, girl. That ain't the toy. She was still hey, here. Uh, oh, hey, hey girl. Chris. Hey, baby. Hey, hey baby girl. How you doing? I'm all right. I'm all right. Yeah. Uh, you looking good today. Yeah, Look at you. Yeah. I got both my leading women in my life right here next to me. I'm sorry, baby. It's just, you know, after Zola died, you know, I just, I just went through so much, and then you got sick, and I'm sorry. I just hadn't had my head on straight. But you know what, Simon? I have to apologize to you because I know I haven't been there for you like I should have been. But I'm gonna make that up to you. Make what up to me? I ain't gotta make nothing up to me, baby. I just needed to know that you was okay. Think you could possibly tell me what it was to make you close up like you did? Well, oh, you know what? We were really worried about you. Was there something going on that maybe you should have told us about? Well, let's just say that I had to learn to forgive Zola <laughs> for passing away and leaving me without a friendship. And then, sorry, I had to uh, forgive you as well. For getting lung cancer, and I know that's something that you had no control over. I'm sorry. What about me, Mom? Did I do something to make you angry? And why on earth were you drinking so much? Oh, Lord. Yeah, I didn't tell you about that one, Mom. You've been drinking. You've been drinking up a storm. You know what? You know, Mom, if I did anything to hurt you or cause you to be angry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Hey, Mom, what you doing? Precious, you know, you didn't do anything. You were just being who we raised you to be. And as far as the drinking was concerned, I mean, I was drinking because I felt like that it would help me through. But in actuality, drinking just caused more problems. But you'll be happy to know that your mother is no longer drinking anything. Thank you, Jesus. That's good. That's good. That's real. Good. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. No need to drink. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, uh, I've just been really, really dealing with a lot. You know, I've been talking to God. And that's why I've been fasting and praying for the last few days because I had to realize that, you know, God was the only person that could uh, help me in my situation, my turmoil. You know, uh, if I can do anything to help you out, I'll come over more often to help you out with Daddy. I promise, because I, I see that you really need that help. Well, Precious, I do have to let you know that I was very resentful towards you because I really do need your help with your dad. And I appreciate any help that you can give me, but I am mindful of the fact that you do have your own life. I what, what, what was that? <laughs> <laughs> That's your child. That is your child. Sarah. Yes. Are you sure there was a something more bothering you than what you let known? I mean, so why you been treating JT so bad? Talk about you ain't gonna go to the boy graduation and all. What's going on with that? Simon, you just need to know JT was not the cause of my problems. I mean, JT is a good boy. Oh, I'm sorry. I mean, young man. And I've decided that um, I am going to go to his graduation. Okay. Oh, mommy, that is yeah. wonderful. I'm so glad to hear that. He's going to be so excited. Wait till I call him tell him. Oh, yeah. Ooh. That's good. I'm glad you're going to the graduation. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you're going to the graduation. But, you know. I know, Simon, that you love me and that you'll always love me. I know that. But, you know, I just had to learn that being resentful and being hateful was no way to be. 
And I had to understand that my actions affected you guys. And I had to ask God to forgive me for how I've been treating you all for the past two years. Okay. I love you, precious. Me too. And I love you, son. I love you too, baby. And I just want you to know this may sound strange to you, but God has told me that I have more time with you than the doctors think. He told me that you're going to get better. Well, we all know that God is the final doctor in this house. Yes, he I is. know that's right. And um, believe it or not, I've been feeling a whole lot better. That's why you look so good, Yeah, indeed. So uh, maybe all that fasting and praying you've been doing to bring upon a miracle, and I can beat this thing. Oh, yeah, definitely. Would you by my side, the Sarah Jane that I married, anything is possible, baby. Oh, I love you so much. I love you, too. Oh, and I'm so proud of you for handling your situation. Excuse me, I'm still in here. I'm going to help myself. Yeah, maybe yeah. you can come on up here and, and talk to me a little bit more now. I get lonely in this room all by myself. Yeah. I ain't got no TV in. <laughs> well, I plan to do just that, spend more time with you. But right now, what I'm going to do is call JT and let him know that I'm coming to his graduation. Here you go. Get the phone. You know what? Don't be listening to my voice message. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, Precious, here. Talk to your daddy for a while while I call hey. JT. I'm glad you got a little sick back. <laughs> Hello? Hey, baby, how you doing? Yeah. <clears throat> yes, it's me. Well, I was calling to let you know that I'll be at your graduation. Yes. And Simon will be there, too, because he's feeling better. What you mean, what's your present? I'm your present. Okay, baby. All right. And JT, your mother's going to be there, too. I'm bringing your mother with me in my heart. I love you, baby. All right, I'll talk to you later. All right, bye-bye. Well, Lord, all's well that ends well. This has really been a test. But you know, I, I wanna thank you and give you praise for the blessings that you've given me in spite of. And I want to thank you for your unconditional love. <coughs> As I sit back and look over my life, knowing I haven't always done what's right. And yeah, sometimes it's hard to believe that you could love a sinner such as me, Lord. I Praise you for all that you've seen me through. Yeah, yeah. Doors I couldn't see. Father, that's why I praise you.
Lord, I thank you for keeping me. All of the things you have for me. And I just got to give you praise always. Oh, yeah. The doors I couldn't see. Father, that's why I praise you. The darkest night, you have always been there by my side. Yeah. That's why I praise you. Lord, I give you praise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You deserve my praise. For everything you've done in my life. I just got to take the time to praise you and praise you and praise you. Thank you, Jesus.